support it. Right, right, right. First. Are you going for Fantastic though in September? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I was hoping I could go for Fantastic, but I don't know if I can make it now because I might be doing pre-pro. Oh, so, nice. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a good reason not to go, but you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll yeah, see. yeah. Yeah. We're rolling. Anytime you want to start. Mm. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's get this started. We got we got five minutes to have some fun. Um, I want to talk about the beginnings. Um, yeah. You're a Welsh-born filmmaker making really cool Indonesian action films. At, at what moment did it all begin? Like, kind of talk about where it all began. Yeah, um, I mean, it all kicked off purely because of my wife, really. Uh, she, she arranged for me to do that documentary out in Indonesia, and it was all about Silat, and that was kind of the first time I got introduced to the martial arts discipline from Indonesia, but then also got to learn about the culture and the traditions of that country. And then I like, finally got introduced to Eco as well. So by doing that documentary, that was kind of the, the thing that sort of kick-started my career out there, really. That was, the, that was the sort of the, the first time I'd ever even contemplated doing a martial arts film. Um, and it gave me, you know, storyline, the culture, tradition, martial arts practitioner, and also a choreography team. So you can't really kind of ask for much more than that then. So that documentary really gave a lot there. Absolutely. Are you going to release that? Or is it, is it released? Because it's like a five-part series or something? It, it was supposed to be part. It was like what we shot was the first episode of what was supposed to be a five-part series. But uh, the other four never got, fin never got made. Okay. So we've managed to kind of like acquire the rights back for them. And uh, hopefully once I get back and finish the promo stuff for the raid, we'll do like a final sound mix and a color grade on that film and then get that out then. Nice. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to talk about the fight scenes in the raid. They're, mm -hmm. they're so fascinating. Um, and I was reading on the press notes some, some things that made it even more fascinating, but I'd like for our readers at home to know more about mm -hmm. it. Um, kind of talk about, you know, a fight scene breakdown from the writing process to actually shooting. Okay. Um, well, in terms of the, 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 the writing side of it, I tend to do most of that in treatment form first. So I, work, I spend a long time on the treatment just to get the full structure right because I don't like to mess around with the structure when it's in script format. I find that very sort of like cumbersome and difficult to kind of shift things around. At least in treatment, you just shift in paragraphs. It's just an easier process for me. And so during the treatment stages, I'll usually know about a month into writing then exactly what the set pieces are, where they're positioned, what the tone should be, who the opponents are, and you know what the props and the locations will be. So then I, I've got a lot of information that I can give my guys then. So I'll, I'll say to Iko and Yayan, like just for example with the Carrie and Bowo fight, and he's carrying his friend, he's got the stick and the knife. When we do that scene, I can tell them, you know, okay, uh, you've got a nightstick in one hand, a knife in the other. That's how you're going to fight for the beginning of the fight. But you've also got a guy on your shoulder that needs you to keep his body up. So then as you're walking down this corridor, you're going to have people come from in front, people from behind, people from the side. You don't know where and when they're going to come from. And every time they come at you, you have to shift his body. But because he can't stand on his, up his, on his own two feet, like you've got to be there to support him to keep him up on his feet. So then those elements inform the choreography team then in terms of like what they're going to do and what are the, what's the unique uh, aspect of this choreo choreography then. So yeah, yeah that's the design process. That's the start. And Eco's he was one half of the choreography team. Right? Yes, yeah, and yeah. Mad Dog was the other half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucien uh, is the oh actor. my god, that guy's amazing. Um, <laughs> So a lot of the, the, the fight scenes are super claustrophobic. Like uh -huh. How do you shoot that without getting in the way of the, their actual like, fighting? Um, it gets difficult, but we, we, when we're designing the fights, we also do like a video storyboard. So we know then every shot, every camera position, every movement, every edit. And so as we're in that space, in that, that so we had like the two meter space for the hallway, we'll design it the same way. So we'll, in the office, we'll have two meters worth of crash mats going down in the strip. So we know where we are. So we can say, like, you can't fight there, you're in the wall. And then if we know at certain points, like, the camera needs to start from behind and come around to a wide profile, if we need to do that, we shift the choreography close to one of the doorways. So as the camera's coming around, an art guy can open the door and the, the camera can step in. So we get that little bit extra two, three steps back and we get wider. So that's kind of like we kind of try to keep in uh, uh, an idea and a sense of knowledge about this, this, like the spatial awareness of the, the location as well. Because that's the one thing that's kind of important when we design these scenes and when we shoot these scenes, is to have like a, a full understanding of the geography of the fight. I want it to be clear and have a certain amount of clarity in terms of what what's going on in the fight scene, from a choreography level right down to who gets injured where and in what space of the the, the the location as well. Yeah. All right. Well, looks like we're about out of time. Just real quick. Um. So you know, you you've made two really kick-ass, unique mm -hmm. martial arts films. How do you top yourself from here? Well, when we finished Maranto, the one thing we said was that we wanted to go uh, 
10 steps further with the sequel, with whatever we did next, sorry. So then the raid was one of those things where the challenge was laid down. We were like, okay, we have to push it 10 steps further. And it'll be the same thing now with the raid sequel as well. We're going to push ourselves to do 10 steps more than what we did on this one. Um, we're not going to kind of like repeat ourselves. Like we're not in the interest of like, you know, we, we don't recycle choreography ideas. We don't, we're not going to do the same movements over and over and again. Um, so there's no real signature move really in each film that we carry on throughout. We kind of just try to kind of create very realistic, uh, grounded sense of, uh, of, of, you know, the fight scenes in them. We didn't, we want it to be relatable. Um, but yeah, so in the sequel to The Raid, we're going to sort of s expand the world out. We're not going to go into one contained building anymore. We're going to take the story out onto the streets and, and, you know, meet the people that let the guy have that building. So we're in the higher ups now. So it's like it's expanding much bigger in terms of scope, but also in terms of the, the action scenes as well. Excellent. So it should be fun. All right, man. Thanks, Thanks again. Thanks. Cheers for that.